Hey, this is Scott from RedmondPhysicsTutoring.com, and in this video I'm going to show you a tricky circuit that has four resistors and two EMFs and a wire along the bottom with no resistor, and we need to find how much current is flowing in that bottom wire and find out whether that current is flowing left or right. When I first looked at this, I was thinking, well, you know, if there's a bottom wire and there's no resistor in it, then everything, every point in that wire is at the same EMF, and therefore there is no reason for electricity to flow. And that's true for electrostatics, but when you have a DC circuit, and when you have these EMFs, the 15-volt and the 9-volt EMFs, those actually cause electricity to flow through the wires. Uh, because that same rationale could apply for the segment going, say, from the 12-ohm resistor down to the bottom corner. That wire is also all at the same electric potential, but we know that current flows through that if there's current flowing the resistor. So it's tempting to say, this is a trick question. The current is zero and the direction doesn't matter. Ha ha ha. But unfortunately, that's not the right answer. So the way to solve this is to set up the loop rule and um, junction rule equations. And in order to do that, we first assume a direction for current. So I'm going to say I1 is going up through the 9 volt EMF to the right through the 6 ohm resistor. Then I'll have I2 going through the 12 ohm resistor. And I'll just make it sort of flow clockwise in that section. I will have I3 going up the 15 volt EMF and therefore that will continue and I'll have I3 going through the 10 ohm resistor. You don't have to draw it in multiple places like I have I1 beside the 9 volt EMF and the 6 ohm resistor and I've drawn I3 there twice as well. I do recommend doing that especially in the beginning but um, once you get the hang of this stuff you probably don't need to draw it twice. That said, if drawing it twice gives you better marks, and you know what, only takes a second. So there's one last current. I'm going to assume it's going to the right, so I'll draw it to the right. And we need to assume these directions because we need to know the directions of these currents in order to write the equations from the Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's uh, current law, or the junction rule. I'll start with a junction say in the lower right corner, call that J1, and the equation I get for that one, right off to the side here, I have I4 going in, so that's positive, I have I5 going in, also positive, and I have I3 going out, so that's negative, and all of those add up to zero, and that's for the junction at the bottom right. For the junction at the bottom left, I'll call that J2, I'll get another equation, for J2, I have I1 going out, so I have negative I1, I2 is coming in, plus I2, and I5 is going out, so minus I5 equals zero. Now it's time to start looking at some loops. And what I like to do is draw the diagram big enough that I can actually draw the loops on this. And so I'm going to start with a loop on the leftmost triangle going down this way. So that'll be loop one, I'll just call that L1. So my L1 equation then, if I'm starting in the bottom corner, I'm going up the nine volt EMF, so I have plus nine. I'm going with the direction of current through that six ohm resistor. So because I'm going with the current, I have minus six I1. Then I'm going with the direction of current through the 12 ohm resistor as well. So I have minus 12 I2. And all of that is equal to zero because I end up at the same point again. For the second loop, I'm going to be a little bit different, do a, uh, sorry, clockwise, second loop in the right triangle. In this case, I'm starting at the bottom again, so this will be L2. I'm going against the current, against I4 through the 24 ohm resistor, so I have plus 24 I4. I'm going against the current through the 10 ohm resistor as well, so I have plus 10 I3. And then I'm going from positive to negative through the 15 volt EMF. So I'm going from positive to negative. That's a delta V of negative 15. And I will need, I have five currents. I need five different equations. So I will take one more loop equation from the middle triangle. I'll start at the bottom left and go down like this. So I have L3. And the L3 equation, if I'm starting there, there is no resistance along the bottom wire. So the first thing I encounter is the 24 ohm resistor. I'm going against the current, so I start 
again, the first thing I have here is plus 24i4. Then I end up going with the direction of current through the 12 ohm resistor, so it's minus 12i2 equals zero. And this gives us my five, or gives me my five equations and five unknowns. You won't typically be asked to solve five equations and five unknowns during a test. The only thing I could imagine them asking you on a test would be to set this up, to write these equations, uh, because that is a direct aspect of physics that you should know how to do. Solving five equations and five unknowns really comes down to algebra. So I'm going to actually show you how to do it algebraically. It I'll be honest, it took me three tries before I could get the right answer. And then I'm also going to show you how to set it up to use a free software program called Octave to solve it in probably about five seconds. The first thing I'm being asked to find is the current in the bottom wire, and that turns out to be I5. So when I set up and solve these equations, I want ultimately to isolate I5. That's going to guide me in choosing how to set these up because I want to express everything else in terms of I5. So the first thing that I'm going to do is rewrite J1. I will also rewrite J2. I can immediately substitute that into the L1 equation. So this I1 here is going to get substituted in to L1 right there. Now again, I want to isolate I rewrite everything in terms of I5, so my goal is then to isolate I2 in this equation. Then I can substitute I2 into the equation for L3, and so that, an, I, that will let me express I4 in terms of I5. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is actually look at equation L2, and I notice that it has an I4 and an I3. And I'd already isolated I3 from J1 at the beginning, so what I'm going to do is rewrite that, so I have 24i4, and I'm going to substitute in for i3. Then I'm going to take the i4 that I isolated for a minute ago and substitute that in here. And that will give me an equation that is only in terms of i5. And then it's just a matter of solving for i5. So that solves the first problem. The first part of the question was to find the current, and it turns out that the current is 0.4 amps. Now, the next question is the direction. Is it left or right? And the answer has to do with whether the current we found is positive or negative. When we set up these equations, we wrote the direction, or we, we included the direction of I5 in the equation. If we look at junction 1, we assumed that I5 was going in, going to the right, and so we added a positive. Same thing for junction 2. We assumed that I5 was going out of junction 2, which is, again, to the right, and we put a negative in that equation. Because the equations were written, or derived, assuming that the current is to the right, when we get a positive answer, that means that it confirms the direction that we chose. Therefore, I5 is traveling to the right. And that answers the question for both parts. Now, I promised also that I would show you how to solve this a different way. So what you want to do, basically, is express this as a matrix. And we can use Octave to do some matrix math in the form where you would have uh, matrix A times vector X is equal to a vector b. So when a is invertible, which is a case when you have five independent equations, or the same number of independent equations as you have unknowns, you can just take the inverse of a times b. I'm using a software program, though, called New Octave. And it's a free software program. It's very similar to MATLAB, which you might have used. And the really great thing about this is that you can actually enter in these matrix matrices. So I'm going to... and those values of x are the current values. So i1, i2, i3, i4, and i5. And for i5, I get 0 0.41489. I'm Scott Redmond, and I help students pass physics. If this video was helpful to you, please like it in YouTube to let me know.